this day. We are happy be in your presence. Our prayer and our desire is to know you deeper and better. Lord, cause your word to reign as water of life into our hearts. And cause it to bring life everlasting. That everyone that is here this morning will experience your freshness in Jesus' name. Amen. Those that are here with burden and one challenge or the other or heavy hearts, Lord, may you lift those things away from their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring joy of salvation. Yes, Lord. Bring healing to the mind, body, and soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the beginning of this service till now. Yes, Lord. Even the ministration from the choir. Get us ready in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Every living soul say amen. Amen. You may be seated now. Turn to the book of um, First Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1, 6 to 13, and Psalm 89. Verse 20. First Samuel chapter 16. Reading verse 1. Then 6 to 13. Psalm 89, verse 20. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long? Without mourn for Saul, saying, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemites, for I have provided me. A king among his sons. Verse 6 to 13. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him for the Lord sees not as men see it for the man of a man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looketh on the heart then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel and Samuel said unto Jesse the Lord have not chosen this and Samuel said unto Jesse I hear all thy children and he said there remained yet the youngest and behold he keepeth the sheep and Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come to them. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. 
And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Psalm 89. Reading verse 20. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. Have I anointed him? I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. Have I anointed him? The message we are about to share is titled Davis Generation. From the scripture we read, David has not done anything good, righteous, holy before the Lord found him. And he made it clear, I am the one that found him with my holy oil. So the choices of God is sometimes mistaken by men. God decided whom to use, whom to choose, whom to call, and whom to work with. At this time, there was vacancy. In the throne of Israel, even though there was a man called Saul that was sitting there, but spiritually the spirit of the Lord have left him, and evil spirit have come upon him because of rebellion. And Samuel was weeping and mourning and crying for what has happened. The Lord appeared to him and said, Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Hence, if I rejected me, I also have rejected him. Arise, go to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have found a man, I have chosen a man after my own heart, whom I have appointed to be king over Israel. Ordinarily, one will think that immediately he got there, there's somebody with surface. Bible says he got there, all the rigorosity and all the intrigues that brought him to Bethlehem. That people were even asking, What has he come to do? To do? What has he come? He said, I've come to perform sacrifice. When he called the Jesus family, Bible said the first son was. Well, statues, statues, height, he had it, size, he had it, hugeness, he had it, everything, he had it. So, when they brought him, someone said, Behold, the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord said to Samuel, No, I have rejected him. It's not the one I have chosen in this house. Do not look on the statue. Do not look on the outward as men do. I search the heart. I look on inside the content. Therefore, I have not approved him. As that one went, he brought Jonadab, the second son. The same thing. He brought Shammai. The same thing. 
and these three are already soldiers in the army of Israel. Then he calls the remaining uh, four to pass. The Lord said, I have not accepted this. That made someone to be surprised, full of amazement. They said, Ah, Jesse, are these the number of your children? And Jesse said, No. They are remaining the youngest. Where is he? He's taking care of my sheep in the bush. And somebody said, I will not delay. No waiting for him to return. Please make haste and fetch him. And someone was sent. And as he fetched David, and David was just entering the house. The Lord said, This is the one. Arise and anoint him. And the Bible said, In the presence of his brethren. Samuel poured anointing oil on him. And from that day, the spirit of the Lord came upon David. He was converted by the spirit of the Lord. He was loaded, inspired, filled, anointed by the spirit of the Lord. And that was what made the difference between him and the race of his elderly ones. That was what made the difference between him and those that were his siblings. Now, what are we saying? So David, in Psalm 89, verse 20 said, that the Lord had found his servant David with an holy oil that he used to locate him and find him. Now, that is to say our salvation is not by power what we are going to become or what we are now is not by struggles but rather it is the lost choice when jesus came he said in john 15 16 ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and they have ordained you that they should go and bear fruits and your fruits shall abide and whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name i will give it to you therefore god's mercies is unmerited god's call is unmerited god's choices is unmerited and only those who the Lord choose and ordained are the people you can call the people that found favor in the sight of God they are David's generation in Romans chapter 9 Romans chapter 9 from verse 10 to 16 Romans chapter 9 from 10 to 16 and not only this, but but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that call it it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated what shall we say then is there unrighteousness with God God forbid for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him 
that run it but of God that showed mercy Jacob and Esau were twins even when they, they were in the belly they were troubling their mother struggling who will be the first and they went to inquire from the Lord and the Lord made it clear that the younger will rule over the elder one and the Lord said I have chosen the younger one in place or above the elder one Bible say they have not done either good or bad neither have they practiced any righteousness but the Lord said I am interested in this one therefore it's no longer he that will it nor he that run it it's the Lord that made the choice so for our salvation for our redemption for our meeting heaven for our being raptured for living for God walking with God it's by God's election choice and call so only those that are so Lord chosen by God are assigned for noble responsibility and divine destiny to fulfill a purpose whereby God has called them so in our struggles to be holy in our struggles to be born again in our struggles to live upright life in our struggles to love the Lord to obey the Lord if we have, did not receive the happy hands we can do nothing Paul the apostle says in Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So that is why in the generation of David, there are men and women, boys and girls, that were chosen, elected, converted, and assigned to walk with the Lord. Paul reiterated our own calling in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from 26 to 29 first corinthians chapter 1 26 to 29 for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but god have chosen the foolish things of the world to confirm the wise and God have chosen the weak things of the world to confirm the things which are mighty and best things of the of life and things which are despised had God chosen yea and things which are not to bring to not things that are that no flesh that no man that no woman or boy or girl should glory in his world in his presence so this is how David enjoyed this great benefit of God's choice I am you whatever we are doing now our born again is by God's election our sanctification is by God's privilege our Holy Ghost baptism is a gift from God our call in the ministry to serve in one department or the other one level or the other is just by divine ordination therefore we are not qualified nor labor nor sacrifice anything before that church was made just as David who was just busy in the village and in the bush but the call went to him he was brought to the city and he was anointed the king over God's people even though at his young age at the age of 17 years so if it's by merit he did not it's by size he was not qualified it's by age he had the elderly ones it's by any other thing in the, in the you know in the requirement he did not have any but God said I search the heart I look inside somebody and I know what that person will become for me so I have elected him so today 
not all of us are qualified to be called the children of God. But we did not merit it. Neither did we labor for it. But the Lord decided to choose us. Not all of us are qualified to be workers in the church. But the Lord gave us that privilege. Not all of us are qualified to be ministers of the gospel. Rather, there were nobles, the wise, the intelligent, or the intellectuals, the way to do, the royal majesties, the professors. But God despised them and brought you in. When you are not qualified, prepared, either spiritually, religiously, or by the law, or by academics, or with money, you don't, not by that qualification. The Lord decided to show us our calling. Choosing we that are beggarly, base, despised, common, and unworthy to fill the vacancy of God's kingdom. So brothers and sisters, what are we implying? God's way is different from our way. According to Isaiah 55, that if your heaven is far from the earth, so is where his thoughts is different from our own thoughts. As heaven is deep high, uh, also higher than the earth, so is the thought of the Lord. So who would have agreed with me or with anybody? Or oh, the mysteries of God is something that if you follow it, naturally you cannot understand. And that's why in Acts chapter 26, let's see the call and the choice of Saul of Tarsus. Acts 26. Now, if it's anything to go by, this man ought to have died, killed, blessed by the Lord because of his background. But let's see how the Lord changed the enemy, his enemy to become his friend. A sinner to become a saint. A persecutor to become a propagator of the saint faith. Now we are told here in verse 12 verse 12 of Acts 26 verse 12 to 19 whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday O king I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining ran about me and they quit journey with me and when we were all falling to the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecuted thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the priest and I say who are thou Lord and he said I am Jesus whom thou persecuted but rise and stand upon thy feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God and that they may receive the forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified which are set apart by faith that is in me. Verse 19. Whereon, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Praise the name of the Lord. He was a man by his character, behavior, attitude, was against Christ and his church. In fact, he had made so many havoc against the church. 
he was among the people that considered themselves and stone Stephen to death. In fact, he kept the clothes and garment of those that stone Stephen. So he was the, the ringleader. Yet, who will find his enemy and spare him? Who will find somebody that want to kill him and spare him? Who will find somebody that say, I want to kill you and spare him? It was the same mystery. Mystery of the Lord's choice and call of God that God manifested in the life of Saul of Tarsus who was going to Damascus to rule and scatter and destroy those that follow him persecuting them but the Lord appeared with his mighty hands of fire and lightning like that of the sun and arrested him and got him blinded and he fell on the ground and humiliated him and disgraced him and he began to call him by name and say Saul Saul why are you troubling me why are you persecuting me he asked who are you Lord that I'm persecuting he said I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth who you are persecuting he said what do you want to do with me what do you have to do are you going to kill me are you going to do he said no he said I do not appear to you to kill you I do not appear to you to destroy you I do not appear to you to ruin you but I appeared to change your life to transform me you and to commission you to be a witness of what you have seen and I'm going to appear to you more and more and I'm sending you to the Gentiles I will deliver you from the hands of the people and the Gentiles of whom I am sending you now and you go there to turn them from darkness to light from evil to righteousness and preach forgiveness of sin and through you shall many be one to me and he said to king agrippa from that moment i submitted my life it was not the poor source choice it was god's choice it was not a, a favor or wrongs or labor it is just by the grace so i want to speak to you today that we join the David generation you will find favor in the sight of God today you are crying how am I going to be free from sin how am I going to be free from this trouble trials temptation remember the Lord said I know the heart I search the heart don't men look out for but I see the inside of man I see the future of man I see the tomorrow of man but for you you only see now and that's why I have chosen David a man after my heart who is going to do my bidding who is going to rule over Israel now that King Saul has disappointed me and that is how the Lord made his choice in David he made his choice in Jacob he made his choice in calling of us into ministry he made a choice in bringing Saul the enemy of the gospel Saul the enemy of the church Saul a sinner person Saul a wicked man Saul the rigid mosaic enforcer Saul who was a murderer yet the Lord appeared to him and changed him and commissioned him to go and preach the same Christ when he had been destroyed therefore so it is only by grace not of works or labor or sacrifice in Ephesians 2 8 and 9 he says it is by grace that we are saved not of works for by grace are ye saved through faith grace through faith grace through faith and that not of yourselves meaning not of your effort or of your labor of your sacrifice it is the gift of God not of works least any man should bragging or boasting and this is what I saw in the life of David that made us to astray the life and the work of of David with God now I sit here David the 80th son of Jesse who was chosen 
and anointed by God, the Samuel, the Lord said, He has found a man after his own heart in the house of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. And God sent Samuel to do his bidding. Left with Samuel, he would have anointed Eliab or Abnadab or Shammai the first son the second and third but the lord said he is not the one he brought another he is not the one he brought it and he brought the seven of them and the lord said no none have chosen them i am looking for the one that i have chosen and waiting for the one i have chosen now you can see that the choice is the laws. Until David arrived, God said, This is the one, rise up and anoint him. And immediately God anointed David with oil. And they came upon him. God's power, strange ability, divine grace and revelation came upon David and the might of God and strength of God came upon David. So David's generation are those who found favor in God's sight. David's generation are those who were chosen by God's divine perimeter of measurement or yardstick. Though they were chosen that God knew them from his creation and they are men women boys and girls who have received this call and they fear God with all their heart with all their soul with all their spirit they not only fear God they love God they obey God and they worship God and praise God with all that they had the act of thanksgiving and prophetic anointing in worship and praises of David have no rival. He has no equal in true history of man. Amen. 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 Let's see some of them. The same Psalm 89. 3 and 4. After the choice Let's see how David washed. Psalm 89. 3 and 4. 28 to 30. 4. I have made a covenant with my chosen as one unto David my servant thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generation from 33 nevertheless my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fall. My covenant will I not break, nor utter the things that is gone out of my knees. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto whom? Unto David. So David was so God's choice and God's man. And David do not miss words when he was praising God with all his life. At the time he was even dancing that the wife misunderstood him. Yet David said, There's nothing I could not do for God. Let's see Psalm 148 from 1. Look at David's way of praising God. He said, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him 
him all his, his angels praise him all his hosts praise him sun and moon praise him all his stars of light praise him you heavens of heavens and ye waters that are above the heavens let them praise the name of the lord for he commands death and they were created he had also established them forever and ever he has made decree which shall not pass praise the lord from the earth ye dragons and all deeps fire hell snow and vapor stormy wind fulfilling his word mountains and all hills fruitful trees and all cedars beasts and all cattle creeping things and flying uh, fowl kings of the earth and all the prince and all judges of the earth both young men and maidens old men and children let them praise the name of the lord for his name alone is excellent his glory is above the earth and heaven he also exalted the home of his people the praise of all his saints even of the children of israel a people near unto him praise ye the lord this is david whom i say he was just a man of many parts a man full of gratitude thanksgiving worship all his life even to death if you can quantify david you can ask him to have the he have first class or a one in places if there is any tutor or lecturer or mentor in terms of praises worship that is david because he recognized that god pulled him from a shepherd boy and pulled the garments of bed i mean of shepherd and gave him the crown and glory and garment of a priest and a ruler over israel so all his life he lived for god he served god he obeyed god and worshiped the lord and everything that david does is full of praises thanksgiving and appreciation so david's generation are people of humble spirit people that are repentant people that have a broken heart and contrite spirit generation of david are men and women that fear and tremble before god although he had his human weaknesses and at times he fell into sin yet he not only repented when reproved but feared god greatly and obey him second samuel chapter 12 verse 14 13 and 14 second samuel 12 13 and 14 unto Nathan I have sinned against the Lord and Nathan said unto David the Lord also have put away what that sin and shall not you shall not what die I stop here he committed immorality with Uriah's wife he tried to cover it he couldn't cover it and when the Lord showed up to Nathan to reprove him, to tell him that all you are hiding, all you are covering up, I am aware of it. Through parable, Nathan narrated the narration, and David, in his own usual manner, passed sentence against the culprit. And Nathan said, David, your majesty, you are the one. He didn't argue like his soul. He fell on the ground and said, Oh Lord, I have sinned against God. In repentance. And Nathan said to him, God have also forgiven you and taken away your sins from you. So brothers and sisters, I 
I may not know the sin you are covering. I may not know where you are hiding. If you want to be among chick, just um, David generation, David, when he realized that God saw all he had done and all his pretense and intrigues and covering, he cried out, I have sinned. And the Lord forgave him. And the Lord also did not allow him to die. Even though he had passed this sentence, look at the way he cried here. In Psalm 51. From 1 to 12, 14 and 17. Have mercy on me. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, brought out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from sin. Or cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge, I know it. I could no longer hide it. I could my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee. Thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou myself justify when thou speakest and be cleared when thou judgest. Behold, I was shopping iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire the truth in the inward past and in the hidden past. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Push me with his rope and I shall be clean. Wash me and shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and brought out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And restore unto me the joy of salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me within with thy free spirit. What a cry of restoration, repentance, reconciliation, and openness. But some people cover their iniquity, thinking that nobody knows. As he was doing before. Let's see verse 17. Verse 17 of that same Psalm 51. Let's say, take 14 first. 14 said, Deliver me from blood guiltiness. That means I shed the blood of Uriah. I also committed immorality with the wife. Oh God, deliver me from blood guiltiness. I don't know who have shed the blood of abortion. Blood of one thing or the other. You have murdered somebody. You can pray like David. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. He will forgive you in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, Oh Lord, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O oh God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Verse 17. The sacrifice of God are of broken and the sacrifices of God are of a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not what? Despise. You can see the repentance. You can see the openness. You can see a man that truly loves God. A man that truly fears God. That is a man I ask you to imitate. Fear your God. Repent from your sin. Turn away from your wickedness. Stop covering your sin. Because the sin you are covering now cannot cover you. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not do what? Shall not prosper. But he that confesses his sin and forsake it shall obtain mercy. Look at Psalm 139 from 1. Psalm 139 from 1. O Lord, 
thou hast searched me and know me. David saying, I have nowhere to hide my thought, my behavior, my conduct, my nakedness, my openness, everything. You have searched it. All my ambition, you know it. Thou knowest my sitting or down sitting and my uprising or standing up. Thou understandest my thought afar off. You know what I'm thinking. You know my thought, even afar. Thou compasses my path and my lying down art acquainted with and art acquainted with all my ways. You know all my ways. They are open. You know them. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it together. Thou hast beset me behind, you are sitting behind me, and before me. Thou said thou hast set beset me behind and before. And lay thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot understand it. I cannot attend unto it. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? Nowhere. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell or in the hole or in grave, behold, thou art there. If I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me. Even the night shall be like, shall be what? Light about me. Yea, darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shineth as day. And darkness and the, the light are both like, both alike unto thee. For thou hast possessed my limbs. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Oh, I will praise you. I am wonderfully, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul know it right well. My substance, everything I am, I own, was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part out of the earth, out of the dust, thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members, my hand, my leg, my eye, my private member, my ear, my tongue, my stomach, my test, everything are written down in your book. No hiding place, sinner. No hiding place, backslider. No hiding place, church goer. No hiding place, carnal person. No hiding place to hide from God. Everything you have done, good or bad, they are recorded. Where you are coming from, the Lord knew about it. All your thought, all your desire, all your plan, all your ambition. You learn from David and become the generation who say, I thought you could not see me when I was hiding from my sin from you. I thought you did not know, but you have found me. So he proclaimed, there's no place to hide. Darkness become light before God. And night become day before God. No hiding place for sinners. No hiding place for secret society members. No hiding place for uh, fornicators and liars. No hiding place. So until you acknowledge this, your emptiness, your vulnerability, and your nothingness, then God may not reach out to you. You have to accept that you need help. Help will come to you in Jesus' name. So generation of the David are men and women that face challenges but victory which came uh, come their way Psalm 34 from 17 to 19 or let's start from 15 Psalm 34 from 15 to 19 the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. 
the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of their troubles the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and saved such as of a contrite spirit many many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him out of them all so every generation do lion and bear came he fought them under the anointing and defeated them and the Lord delivered him out of their hands Goliath came Goliath came and also faced him and challenged him and challenged the armies of Israel even though on qualified soldier on trained soldier uh, just as a teenager when he came to the scene and he saw what would happen he put his life on line he risked his life facing giant Goliath because he was a man that loved God he gave his life he gave his all in order to remove the reproach from the armies of Israel and for defilement of Goliath he laid down his life and that was why the Lord delivered Goliath into his hand and the Philistines so many are the affliction of the righteous of the believer of the sanctified of the child of God nevertheless the Lord will deliver you out of them all in Jesus name I say out of them all in Jesus name Amen. I say out of them all in Jesus name Amen. so no matter the problem you are facing now the affliction you are going through the trial the temptation I prophesy to you come to David's generation come to David kind of spirit he had which is the spirit of God and the Lord will give you a happy hand Amen. and you will see the end of that trouble and that trouble will not see your end in Jesus name Amen. so I said here because of this grace upon David and anointing which came upon him and the spirit of the Lord started dwelling on him working on him and using him lion came and bear to challenge this anointing and this call on David's life and David killed both lion and bear so David's generation a generation of lion killers David's generation a generation of bear killers now Goliath came he also in first Samuel 17 26 to 29 31 to 37 49 to 52 also he brought Goliath down and cut off his head yes David generation are those that have faith in God they are those who do not fear the foes or the enemy they are those who are ready to go as far as God is concerned David said to Goliath in the name of the armies of Israel who you defy this day I know you will deliver into my hand and I'm going to cut off your head and I'm going to give the best of the air your flesh and they, they will know that God do not save by might or by a sword or whatever did it happen did it happen so David generation are giant killers I say they are giant killers yes sir I may not know the giants standing on your way I may not know David generation they are champion killers they are giant killers they are lion killers they are bear killers in fact David generation a generation that had killed champion and giant amen I say amen amen so in second Samuel 21 15 to 22 David generation was a generation that knew the mind of God they walk with God they fear God and they obey only but God and not man second Samuel chapter 21 15 to 22 moreover the Philistine had had yet war again with Israel and David went down and his servant with him and fought against Philistine and David was faint and Ishbeth 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 
be burned up. Which was of the sons of the giant. Way of, of whole spear. Weight 300 stairs, uh, shekels of brass. In weight. He being guarded with a new sword. Thought to have slain David. To be head of the sorry thought that they have slain David but Abisha the son of Zerah secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him then the men of David swear unto him saying thou shalt go no more out with us to battle that thou quench not the light of Israel and it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistine at God. Then see Beshev, the Husha, Husha tied, slew Seth, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in God with the Philistines, where Elton, the son of Jeregon, a Bethlehemite slew the brother of Goliath, the Gigatite, the staff of whose spear was like weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in God, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, on every foot six foot toes, four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant and when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemar the brother of David slew him these four were born to the giants in God and all fell by the hand of who? of David, that is the David generation and his, by the hand of what? of his servants so nobody will be a David generation without being a giant killer Nobody will be a generation of David without being an overcomer. I profess that to you. Whatever the enemy has prepared against you between now and the end of the year, they will come under your feet in Jesus' name. Yeah. That same spirit of anointing upon David that brought him to landlight, that grace that brought him to, to God's choice, I say to you, he will give you the same anointing. You will humiliate your enemies. Amen. They are calling your name with enchantment in the village. They will fall for your sake. Amen. They are calling your name in the mirror. The mirror will blast. Amen. They want to dagger you. The dagger will reverse to their heart. Amen. They set accident for you. Accident will jump them. Amen. Whatever they plan against you in this time, as David generation, they will fall for your sake. Amen. I said they will fall for your sake. Amen. David, the psalmist. David, the musician. David, the prophet. David, the king in Israel. David, a man after God's heart. David, a man that loved God. Even gave most of his life, time, service and even wealth in preparation of building a house for the almighty God in appreciation of what God has done for him who will not appreciate God when you have eight sons God came and chose the last one to be king over others God chose and anointed him even was the youngest at that age why won't you appreciate God? Brothers and sisters, do you know your background, where you're coming from? Have you ever thought where you're coming from? Have you ever thought where the Lord met you? Have you ever desired and thought and reason where the Lord picks you from the gutter of sin, from the gutter of immorality? Have you ever thought where the Lord picks you when you were sick, near to death? When the enemy has captivated you, captured you, and placed you under surveillance, have you ever thought you are going to be in the house of God today? Have you ever imagined from where the Lord has picked you? David never forget. David never forget because he always say, I remember we 
me, he did not beat me. From the bush, he sent for me. As I reach, he anointed me and chose me above my father's house to be a captain and a king over Israel. So David was such a man that appreciated God. David was such a man that lived his life for God. David was such a man that risked his life and put his life on line for the sake of love and appreciation. Brothers, how much do you appreciate God? In service, in coming to church, in evangelism, how do you appreciate God? In soul winning, how do you appreciate God? In doing the work of God, like David, if you are to be general, David generation, you may be a such, you're supposed to be such individual who know how to fear God, how to obey God, how to serve God. Second Samuel 23. Look at the way he introduced himself here from one to five. Now, this be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the of the God of the God of Jacob, and the sweet word, psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. What a prophetic praise and worship. And it shall be as a light of the morning. When the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, and the tender grass spring, springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Verse 5, though my heart be not so with God, yet he have met with me. What? An everlasting covenant. Order it in all things and sure, for this is all my salvation. And all my desire, though he maketh it not to grow. Amen. He have introduced himself here. And the son of Jesse, the anointed one of Israel, the king in Israel, the psalmist, the prophetic one, and he gave his own, a man full of the spirit, a man who had given tongue of praise and worship. And as he was saying here, he gave order that those that rule over people must rule in the fear of God. They must be just. And also, there must be light that people follow. They will shine. Their life will shine. Their righteousness will shine. Their holiness will shine. Their purity will shine. The truth, the love of God, the humility, this will shine that people will see it without anything clouding it. Because that is what the Lord ordained. So, learn from David. If you are to be among them, then the Lord will make it happen in Jesus' name. Now, David appreciated God in also First Chronicle chapter 26. I mean 28. First Chronicle chapter 28. First Chronicle chapter 28. From 1 to 6. Nine and fourteen, nineteen to twenty-one. And David assembled all the priests of Israel, the princes of the tribe, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by cause. And the captains over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons with officers and with the mighty men and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mind 
I had in my heart as for me I had in my heart to build an house of the rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and have made ready for the buildings but God said unto me thou shalt not build an house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and have shed what? blood how be it? the Lord God of Israel choose me before all the house of my fathers to be king over Israel forever for he had chosen Judah to be the ruler and of the house of Judah the house of my father among and among the sons of my father he likened me to make me what king over Israel he took them to memory lane and of the, all my sons for the Lord have given me many sons he have chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel and he said unto me Solomon thy son he shall build my house and my court for I have chosen him to be my son I will be what his father we are talking about God's choice God's election the first son of David was called Ammon after Ammon there is one and also Absalom was number three after number three Adonijah was number four among all this he didn't choose any of them to be to replace David it was the same Samuel I mean Solomon sorry who came from the womb of the same woman that seduced who that seduced David Bathsheba God decided to go and choose that woman who came from background backyard and this is her son to be king he called him my son so many of you may have been born out of wedlock it does not mean God might knows you some are also bemoaning their past crying no forget that God knows you from the beginning to the end all you need to do is to be available for him for David he appreciated God and wanted to build a house for the ark of the covenant he has gathered the materials and all everything as he was about to do that the Lord sent a, 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 a prophet and said go and tell David I know his heart he's a man after my heart I've chosen him he loved me he loved me he, in fact I, I am boast of, I can boast of him but tell him he will not build me a house for he was a man of war his hand is full with many blood he cannot use that blood to build the house for me David was not offended he was okay I leave it like that but David said even though God says so I have gathered materials he has chosen my son to build him a house praise the name of the Lord so brothers and sisters what have the Lord chosen you to do in the church why have the Lord brought you to fishers for men why has the Lord saved you why has the Lord called you as a pastor as a worker, as a coordinator have you found the purpose why you are here have you found the purpose why you are not organ in that leadership, have you found the purpose for David said this is why the Lord chose me and I wanted to go as a man, he said no I have chosen your son Solomon you want to be David's generation learn to listen to God learn to fear God learn to obey God and let's see verse 9 of the same chapter verse 9 of second, first the, uh, chronicle 28 verse 9 and thou Solomon my son know thou the God of thy father imitate me live like me your father follow like God like me your father fear God like me your father he said know the Lord the, the God of thy father serve him with a perfect heart not with divided mind and with a willing mind not by constraint not by persuasion of people for the Lord searcheth our hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thought if thou seek him he will be found of thee but if thou forsake him what will happen he will cast thee out of what 
or fall ever. Take heed now. Be very careful. For the Lord have chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Then David kept to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch or, and of the house thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chamber thereof and of the inner palace thereof and of the place of the mystery seat and the pattern of all he had by the spirit God already shown this thing to David by the spirit he was a man of the spirit and of the court of the house of the Lord and in all and of all the chambers round about of the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries of the dedicated things and also for the cause of the priests and the Levites and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord and for the and for all the vessels of service in the house of the Lord he gave gold he gave of gold by weight for things of gold for all instruments of all manner of service silver also of all instruments of silver by weight for all instruments of every kind of service verse 17 also pure gold for the flesh hooks and the bowels and the cups and for the golden vessels he gave gold by weight for every basin and likewise silver by weight for every basin of silver for and for the altar of Israel in fact all this we're talking about how David have already gathered all these materials showing the love he had for God showing the interest he had for God and he handed it over to his son Solomon verse 20 he said to him or 19 all this said David the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern and David said to Solomon his son be strong and of a good courage and do it fear not nor be dismayed for the Lord God even my God will be with thee he will not fail thee nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord and behold the courses of the priests and the Levites even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God and they shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship every willing skillful man for any manner of of service also the prince and all the people will be holy at thy command. Amen. I say amen. amen. So, what shall I say anymore of David? What did the Lord say? David was a man after my heart. I saw this in God. I saw this in Jesus. I also saw this in many of his faithful disciples. If you read at the cave of Adullam, in First Samuel, I mean Second Samuel, how David relates even to his enemy baffles me. In First Samuel chapter one, five to seventeen, a man came to, to announce that Saul have died, and David said, "How are you sure?" He said, "I'm the one that killed him." Amen. I carry his cap to come and show you. He was not the man that killed the man. The killed Saul. He wanted to get patronage and reward. I said, tell me what happened. He said the, uh, he was injured and the enemy was chasing him. And he said, who are you? I said, my mama like, he said, come and kill me. So that this people will not kill me. I killed him. I brought his crown. I thought that David was supposed to be the just happy. That the person I've been looking for have what? Do you know what David did? David said, he said, which tribe you come from? He said, I'm a like, you are not afraid to kill God's anointed. 
You come to tell me to receive the word from me. The blood of that man will be upon your head. He killed the man that claimed to kill David. What kind of heart is this? What kind of man is this? Also, at in second uh, as in first Samuel 24, 1 to 10. Something happened. King Saul was pursuing him up and down. Amen. Amen. He came to the cave and King Saul was there with his people trying to overrun David and his people. And David went there and discovered that they, he was sleeping. And all his bodyguard. As he touched his garment and tried to cut his garment, he passed to say his heart what smote him. He trembled. He took his garment and this is, and went far and shouted and shouted and saw and his uh, his uh, uh, commander Abner wake up. He said, "My Lord." You are pursuing me here and there. The Lord has delivered into my hand today. My servants say I should kill you. But I say no. Who am I to touch the lost world? Anointed. Look at your cloth. I cut away. Look at your bottle, water bottle I carried. Can't you see? I will have killed you now. And Saul lamented. Is that my son David? You are more righteous than me. I am wicked. Have not known you are going to be king. A man after God's heart. Who spare his enemy. Another time again in this first Samuel chapter 21, from 25. Also, the Lord also delivered Saul in the hand of who? David. Because the Bible says, and God gave the man deep sleep with all his servants. And David got there also. Look at the man. And the son said, Oh, glory be to the Lord of the Lord of Israel. Your God has delivered your name into what? Give God permission. Let us cut off his head so that you become king. And David repeated and said, Are you not afraid? You sons of Belair. Who am I to touch the Lord's anointed? He removed some of his materials. Even the crown, the thing we can't forget, he removed it and went afar across the other place and shouted again and Saul wake up and say who is, is that my is that my son it's like the son of my, my the voice of my son he said I am the one sir long live what have I done to you that you're pushing me here and there you have chased me away even from Jerusalem I cannot worship the true God you push me to go and worship all the idols but God has been helping me you have listened to people they say I hate you if I hate you, if I'm against you, if I want your truth, has the Lord not delivered you to me? Look at your, look at this, look at it, look at your staff, look at this. I came there now. If I wanted to kill you, I would have killed you. King Saul made this step. Yeah. David, you're more righteous than me. That you spare your enemy. Say, who will find his enemy spare him? A man after God's heart. What is your prayer concerning your enemy? Fall and die. Kill and kill and kill and die, die. But David was a man after God's heart. He spared King Saul. He didn't kill him. When King Saul died, they crowned his son, one of his sons, king. In 2 Samuel 1, 5 to 17. And 2 Samuel 4, 1 to 12. That of 2 Samuel chapter 1, we have read that. But that of 2 Samuel 4 was that the two bodyguards and of the kings, uh, the son's son, connive and cut the head of their master and took the head to David. And say, come and rule over the whole Israel. This is your king. We don't cut off his head to bring him to you. For you to know you are now free to rule the whole Israel. Say, who are you? Say, we are the same brothers. We are commanders in the army. 
he was sleeping when they do what cut off his head and David said the man that claimed that he killed Saul I know spare him I kill him you you kill somebody that's more righteous than you in the bed where he's sleeping he want to get reward from me he said kill two of them instead of David celebrating okay the son okay let me go and take over David was waiting for God's time many of us are in a hurry to marry many of us are in a hurry to get money many of us are in a hurry to get one thing or the other not waiting on the Lord David's generation must be generation that fear God that are patient that wait on the Lord that see the face of God in every matter that they inquire Lord where will I go now where will I go now they are not in a hurry they don't know living for themselves David's generation are the generation that love even their enemies and Jesus commanded in Matthew 5 verse 43 to 45 he said you should love your enemy if he's hungry give him food if he's thirsty give him water if he's, have, if he's naked clothe him while you do that you are bringing charcoal of fire against him but today generation church generation is do me i do you god no day but david said no david said so you come to receive the word your blood will be up that man will be upon your head and david commanded those men were killed now what are we implying is there any man here who desire to see god on the last day do you know david before he died he blessed his family he died at a good old age he made it to heaven all his sins were forgiven all his mistakes were written off by God because of election till today God is seeking for you God is calling for men and women irrespective of your background your father may have worshipped idol may be gone to court your mother may be a prostitute born out of prostitution like Solomon where he came from God can make good of you only if you are ready and willing now we say if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land can we fail me to tell you that David was a man of love he so much loved God and loved his brethren and love the house of Israel that was ready to die for them. Even when he was not yet a king, he was fighting the lost battle. Even when he was hiding from one village to another, he was still fighting the lost battle. Until finally, when the time came, the whole Israelite looked for him and brought him to come and rule. That message will come in, which is titled Transition. I will stop here. So, brothers and sisters, I call you and invite you to be David generation. The Lord is looking for you. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is seeking for you. It may not be by your power. It may not be by your might. You must have fallen somewhere or make mistakes somewhere. All you need to do is to say, Lord, I'm available. He will bring healing to your bone, to your marrow, to your spirit. Can somebody say, Amen? Amen. Rise up and say, Lord, make me a David generation. Make me a giant killer. Make me a champion killer. Make me a beer killer. Make me a lion killer. Make me overcomer. Many are the afflictions and the troubles of the righteous. The Lord will deliver them out of their all. No matter who the enemy has inspired to trouble you, God will trouble them. Though that enemy have inspired to kill you, God will make you to be alive and see their end. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I have seen the genesis of the David generation. I am willing and ready. Now it's not by my power, not by my mind, it's by the Lord's choice. So, Lord, I surrender. Surrender your life. He will hear you. He will save you. He will forgive you. He will change your life.
show me your mercy, Lord. Father, show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Daddy, show me your mercy. Show me your Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Daddy, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Daddy, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Oh, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. He said that we have mercy of God. Your mercy. Ask him to show you mercy for your salvation, for your healing, for your miracle. Ask him for mercy, for forgiveness. Ask him for mercy. It's only by mercy that we can prevail. It's only by grace we can make it. Tell him I am not God for grace. Ask God for grace. Show me your mercy. 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 Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Daddy, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Jehovah, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Father, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Daddy, show me your mercy. It's not me that run it, not they that also walk it. It is the Lord that showed mercy. That what David found, that what Saul of Tarsus found, that what Lord Jacob found, Isaac of Esau. That same mercy that we are that can be found, we can be found by the same mercy. You'll be crying, I want to be saved, I want to be born again. Tell the Lord, show me mercy. I want to be forgiven. Tell the Lord, show me mercy. I want my name in the book of life. Lord, show me mercy. Oh, cry for mercy. It's only by the grace of God we are saved, not of works. I don't know the challenge you are facing. 